Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from another world who came to Earth when the planet Krypton was destroyed by quakes and explosions. Superman, who can bend steel in his bare hands, leap tall buildings at a single bound, and who mingles with ordinary men disguised as mild Clark Kent, news reporter. Returning home from their adventures in the South Seas, Kent and Jimmy Olsen recover a packet of world-famous crown jewels which have been stolen from a national exposition. As they're wondering what to do next, a sudden wire from Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, orders them to leave the train and spend the night at the Grand Hotel in the city of Minerville, there to wait for a telephone call. Unknown to either of them, however, the telegram is the work of the Yellow Mask and his new partner in crime, a mysterious girl, who is also interested in the stolen jewels. In adjoining rooms... Jimmy and Kent retire for the night, the five million dollars worth of precious gems locked in a wall safe in Jimmy's room. But even as the young copy boy falls into a deep, exhausted slumber, his door opens quietly, and a mysterious figure slips through the darkness. The following morning... Oh, all right. Hey, Jimmy, what's the matter with you? Can't you hear the phone? Hmm? Oh, golly, I didn't know what it was. I'll answer it. Hello? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, thanks. It's the clerk. He says it's 8.30. It goes my alarm clock. I must have been sleeping like a lamb. Oh, boy. I'll say you were. That phone rang ten times if it rang once. All right, now, come on. Hop out of bed. All right. Oh, great Scott. What's the matter? Look at that safe. It's wide open. The jewels. The jewels are gone. Well... Get into your clothes, Jimmy. Hurry. Got to work fast. Come on, kid. Get into your clothes. Watch your step, please. Going down. Come on, Jimmy. Get in. Okay, Mr. Kent. Gee, Mr. Kent, I don't understand it. How could anyone have done it? That's allowed, Jimmy. It's fairly easy to see how it was done. Someone sneaked into your room in the middle of the night and opened the safe. But how? Why didn't it wake me up? Well, that's one of the things I can't understand myself. Mr. Kent, do you you think it could have been either of the people in the rooms next to us? No, hardly. One of them is a well-known diplomat, and the other was that poor paralyzed woman. Mm. Please go along. Watch your step, please. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, first of all, we'll go to the front desk and report the theft. Are you going to tell them about the jewels? Are you going to break the story? No, I have to, I'm afraid. It isn't our story anymore. Then we'll wait for that long-distance call I put through to Mr. White. Maybe he can explain a few things that puzzle me. Oh. Mr. Kent, call for Mr. Kent. You're right here, boy. Jimmy, that's the call now. Yeah. Long distance, Mr. Kent. Yes. Take it right here in the booth, please. Thank you, boy. Now, look here, Jimmy. Yeah? You go ahead to the room clerk's desk and wait for me. But don't you say a word to anybody. All right. Hello. Hello. Harry White speaking. Mr. White, uh, this is Clark Kent. Kent? Well, well. Voice from the other world. How are you? Fine, thanks. I uh, hated to call you, Mr. White, after what you said, but uh, I had to. I can't hear you very well. Where are you? I'm in Minerville. Where? Minerville? Uh Uh-huh. What's going on in Minerville? Oh, plenty, but not what you think. Or maybe it was what you expected. Kent, what are you talking about? I've been waiting for you to get back here to work. But your telegram. The one you sent me on the train. What? I didn't send you any telegram. What? Didn't you send me a wire telling me to stop at the Grand Hotel in Minerville and wait for a call? Not me. (laughs) Somebody's pulled your leg, Kent. Not the first of April, either. Where's young Jimmy? Oh, he's here with me. Well, hurry home, Kent. We've got a whale of a story breaking here any minute. Right up your alley. Okay, Mr. White, we'll be there. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, what was it you called me about? Well, I can't tell you now. Not after what you just told me. You'll know all about it as soon as I see you. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye, Kent. Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent! Jimmy, listen. I've just been talking with Mr. White, and that telegram was a fake. He didn't know a thing about it. That's not all. Well, you hear what I just found you out. You realize what it means? The yellow mask must have sent that wire himself. Yeah, and the yellow mask stole the jewels. Or that girl. What? How do you know? I heard about it while you were in the phone booth. Boy, is this whole telling an uproar. Mr. Kent, that lady. You know, the one in the next room who was wheeled and all bundled up. Yeah, the, the sick girl? Sick my foot. Mr. Kent, she did it. What? And I'll bet you she was the same girl who was in the train. Oh, wait. Hold on, Jimmy. What makes you think that? Her being paralyzed was all a fake. I just heard the clerk talking about it. But... I don't understand. Well, when the clerk went on up to her room early this morning to see if she needed anything, the room was empty. 
Nobody there at all? Not even the nurse? No. But that thing they wheeled her in on was there and all the blankets. And something else. What? A set of burglar tools. Oh, I see. Well, Jimmy, they're one up on us. But they haven't licked us. Not yet. Yeah, but they've got the jewels, Mr. Kent. Yes, they've got them now, but they won't have them for long. Two to one, that girl's taken the early train for the city. Sure she has, but what are we doing? There's not another train till afternoon. I found that out last night. Now, Jimmy, we've got to get there ahead of her and meet that train when it comes in. They can't. My gosh, how can we? Just one way. Fly. Come on, Jimmy. Quick. Down to the airport. Maybe we can hire a plane. I don't know, Jimmy. It's going to be touch and go. The train had almost two hours start on us. Well, they'll be catching up on it now. Where's Craig Scotland? Yes, but remember, we've got to have half an hour at least after we land to get from the airport to the station. He wanted to call ahead to Mr. White. Huh? If we don't make it, he can get to the station himself and trailer. How could he? He's never seen her. Oh. Hey, look over there to the east, Mr. Kent. Isn't that a tower? Jimmy, you're right. It's the Parkway building. Look how it stands up there through the fog. Well, it means we're home. Yeah. 30 stories high and nobody in it. Why is that, Mr. Kent? Why has the parkway building always been deserted? Well, I'll explain that some other time, Jimmy. It's quite a story. Right now, I've got all I can do handling this plane. Boy, you some flyer, all right. Where are we heading, Mr. Kent? I'll set her down at the Eastern Airport. And then we'll grab a cab for the terminal. Hey, that'd be quite a crosswind. Are we drifting? Yes, we are. Trying to bring her around, but we're heading straight for the tower. Look at it. A layer of fog all over the city. Come on, Mr. Kent. The tower sticks up to it like a lighthouse. Yeah, I am looking. It's funny. Never guess it was a great big city underneath that gray blanket of fog, would you? Hey, aren't we kind of high, Mr. Kent? Well, I've been coming in at 15,000. Don't want to bother the transport. Now we start dropping. Hey, Mr. Kent, the motor's missing. Yes, yeah, that's queer. It's got plenty of gas. Speed lines must be fouled. Listen to it, Mr. Kent. What do we do? Mr. Kent. It's all right, Jimmy. It's all right. Look. I'll glide her down. If I can ever get out of this wind. Mr. Kent, look. We're heading straight for the tower. Yeah, I know. Can't seem to get her out of it. Oh, you're driving on carpet? Tell me, Mr. Kent. The motor. It's dead. Mr. Kent, the motor's dead. Steady, Jimmy. Steady. We'll be all right. But we're diving. We're going like a bullet. Mr. Kent. Jimmy. I can't bring her out of it. Something's pulling us. It's the wind. Crosswind. The tower. Look. Look, it's coming right up out of Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent. Sit tight, Jimmy. I'll get her out of this. I'll get her out of it and land in the marsh. Hang on. We're here. We made it just in time. Oh, well, we're lucky. I don't see how you got the plane down, Mr. Kent. What was it that pulled us around so? Oh, we'll go into that later. There's something else on hand right now. Right back at that pillar, quick. What are we heading for? That girl comes down. Aren't you going to stop her? Stop her? No. Why not? Jimmy, use your head. That girl's working with the yellow mask, or at least we think she is. Oh, boy, we know it. All right. If we follow her and see where she goes, maybe we can find the yellow mask himself. Tell me, Mr. Kent. Do you think so? Well, it's worth the chance. Yeah, but she'll be looking for us. No, she won't. She thinks we're still back in Minerville. Jimmy, look. Huh? There she comes right now. Yeah, it's her, all right. She's walking plenty fast. All right, now watch her. See where she's heading. Mr. Kent, look. She's walking toward the subway. Yes, Jimmy. There she goes, down the stairs. Come on, we've got to follow her. Quick. Bill, Bill. Bye, Bill. Bye, Bill. Jimmy, she's still on the train? I don't want to look myself. She might recognize me if she saw us both together. Yeah, she's still there, Mr. Kent. Good. She's sitting way down at the end of the last car. I can see her through the connecting doors. All right, all we can do is watch and stick with her, but keep your eyes open at every station. Well, she's still there? Yeah, she's still there, Mr. Kent. Yeah, right in the same place. She's one of the lights off for. Why, the train stopped. We're not at the station yet. That's all right. I'm just waiting for the all-clear signal before pulling into the station. Look. What? Look, what you see isn't there. She's gone. It can't be. 
be. She must be there. But she isn't. Look for yourself. Come on, into that car. This just isn't so. Oh, we've been through every car on the train. Yeah, we're in the saddle. Wait, Mr. Kent, stop the train. She's fallen off. Fall across. No, she didn't fall. She knew what she was doing. She did it deliberately. Jimmy, that girl's back there in the tunnel, and I've got a hunch I know why she slipped off the train at that spot. What is Clark Kent's hunch about the mysterious girl's disappearance? Did she fall from the moving subway train? Or did she, as Kent believes, slip off deliberately? And if she left of her own accord, what secret is concealed in the darkness of the tunnel? Don't forget to tune in next time for more thrills and high excitement. Tune in and follow the story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted...